didn't play well. Good for you, where did the pull trick feel? Oh, you just watched it. This is the post-game interview. After the Seattle Storm lost 93-86 to to the Connecticut Sun, we spoke with Sue Bird, Ezzie McBegore, and Coach Quinn. All right, the work's all set. Let's go ahead and open it up first. Okay, so it seemed as if this game turned in that fourth quarter. There. Just what, what happened? Um, yeah, this is one of those games where it's, it's, it's hard to pinpoint. I feel like once we watch film, I, I could probably have a better answer for you because um, it happened kind of fast. Um, they seem to turn us over. Like what I'm remembering is they turned us over and got some easy buckets, and then it felt like the the basket just got bigger and bigger. Because then all of a sudden threes started dropping that um, hadn't dropped for them early in the game, um, and they just were able to kind of uh, come back from. I think we're up ten at one point mm-hmm. in that second half, right? You're Something at thir- like that. Yeah, I think you guys were up thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Even better. <laughs> By better, I mean worse. Um, so yeah, so it felt like once they kind of got things going in their direction, we couldn't really find ways to, to overcome it. And then just uh, for like if you guys, did you feel that you had uh, some f- fresh legs maybe because you guys did for, I mean, er- early on when you guys went up, I want to say 61 to 48, like it was barely you two guys just kind of going. <laughs> and uh, Piff said that, I was like, was it? <laughs> I don't, I don't know what he, I mean. Uh, I, I don't know, know I think just, legs. yeah. I don't know if it was fresh legs. I think obviously being locked away, I guess for a few, um, for a week, you kind of just want to come out and be back with the team. So it was probably more excitement to just get out on the court and play again and just be together as a full team for the first time. So um, just this was the first game you guys had everyone. Yeah. How do you think the team did overall? I mean, obviously not the outcome you wanted, but how do you think you guys did? I think very similar to previous games. We have spots where we look great and spots where we don't. Um, So, you know, having our full roster is very encouraging because we can finally start to build. Um, You know, and I'm sure for for all of us, we can start to get a little more comfortable out there. Um, I'm sure for the coaching staff, they can start to plan ahead a little bit better. You know, they know, I mean, knock on wood, I don't even wanna. COVID's just been such a B, I don't even know. Hopefully it doesn't impact anybody else. Um, But they can plan now that they know, you know, who's gonna be in the game. Um, and that's kind of how I'm approaching this. This, this loss does sting, um, given that it's at home, given that we had control of the game um, early on. But I am encouraged by the fact that we can finally start to build with our full roster. And then as the um, Connecticut's front court is pretty incredible with Brianna Jones, John Quill Jones, um, even Dewana Bonner. Uh, just talk about the difficulty, um, their physicality, and the difficulty of matching up against them. Um, yeah, I think they are obviously a physical team. Um, it's tough, especially I think when they put in a bigger lineup. I think we just have to, um, you know, obviously work out matchups and kind of adjust to that. But um, yeah, like I said, they're a great team. They're a strong team. But I think just going forward, we obviously play them again. Um, so just working out how to match up better against that team. Going back to the fresh legs, I'll ask the opposite question. Does it t- take a moment? You know, you need a game underneath your breath. It's been a week. Yeah. What does that? affected somewhat? I mean, how do you answer this question? Um, I think COVID affects everybody differently. Um, We even, just the two of us, probably got COVID on the same day, I think. We're kind of on the same timeline, but we've had different symptoms, we've experienced different things. Um, You know, so it's it's hard to really put it in words. Like, do I feel great? No, I just had COVID. Like, I have a little bit of a headache. (laughs) I think that's similar for for Ezzy. It's like, but were we able to play? Yeah, it, it, it didn't cause anything, if that makes sense. Um, it's just something that I hope that whole COVID brain thing moves on fast. With a full roster, everyone healthy now, what is um, important for you guys to focus on in these next couple of games, um, having the yeah, complete roster kind of intact now? Um, I think just getting back to um, you know Storm basketball, just flowing as a team. And um, obviously, I think Noe has said our defense is um, you know, helped us in a lot of games, so just kind of sustaining that as well. But just getting used to playing with each other again, playing with different rotations, and um, just having each other's backs. I think we are a team that you know loves playing with each other, gets along on and off the court. So just to have each other, um, you know, finally together is a great thing. Um, and yeah, I think it's going to work in our favour. Um, you know, you played against 
uh, you know, this unit for, you know, Connecticut, they've had it for a while, but, um, you know, they had AT playing some minutes at, you know, the one tonight in those lineups where, you know, you had John Paul Jones and Brianna Jones and Duana um, and just all that height on the floor. From Just from your perspective, how does that kind of change things for them, just having her at, at the one and having all that height out there? Um, yeah, obviously with a big lineup. I mean, this is a team that, you know, I've, I've, they miss Jasmine Jones, uh, sorry, Jasmine Thomas for sure. So obviously I wish her the best. I'm sure, you know, she's either had surgery or having surgery. Um, of course, they're, they're going to have to find ways to, to replace the point guard, which might I say is not easy. Um, <laughs> but it's, AT is very capable of that. And, and, I, and obviously that does give them a different look with this big lineup. And this was a team, even before Jasmine got hurt, that was very high in terms of rebounding. So it's a team that we knew coming in, offensive rebounding was going to be something. Um, when you add the size, it, it, it makes them hard to guard down low. You know, um, I personally don't think it's like insurmountable. I think we made some mistakes and that they capitalized. Um, if you if you notice in the second half, we played a lot of zone. That's not normally what we play. So I think at times we got a little lost in it. But these are things that we're going to have to work on. You know, and again, I'm very encouraged by the fact that we do have our full roster. We're going to be able to work things out. We're going to get better. It's it's a given. Hey, just add five and five after ten games. Is it time though to? I mean, this panic. Is no, not panic. <laughs> what, what no, it's not time to panic. No. I I'm not joking. Like, you know, I don't know that. And I've had my fair share of um, experiences in this league with losing players, injuries, this that. The, the the way that COVID has pulled people in and out. We find out on game day. Um, these are like real reasons, they're not excuses. And so when you have real reasons that happen that were out of your control, yeah. Would I prefer to be 10 and 0? Of course, of course, of course. And, and are there moments <coughs> in games where, like I said, we make mistakes and that's on us? Yes, and we have to get better in those moments. But I feel like given the, the push and pull of the first 10 games, um, again, the word I, I, I continue to come back to is encouraged. I, I don't feel, I'm not, I'm not stressed, I'm not panicked about those things because I, I do feel like we can continue to build. We're just, we're, we got a little bit of a, a late start, I guess, on that. So on the positives, I mean, Ezzy's development this year, mm -hmm. her performance today, uh, just talk about the growth you've seen out of her. Yeah, um, I think she's just really starting to understand herself more, understand um, the game a little bit more at this level, understand um, when to, right? Like, that's what basketball is. Ezzy's always known how to do <coughs> things, and now she's starting to see, like, when to do them. Um, and it's funny because I still see so much more that she can, she can do and grow in areas she can grow in, which is a great sign. I mean, the kid's still, what are you, 22? 22. She's still 22. <laughs> I mean, this is still, you know, this is your third year? Yeah. 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 Third year at 22. I mean, that's, that's, you would never, I don't think somebody would walk into the gym today for the first time and think as he was a 22-year-old. You know what I mean? Like she pre now she's presenting like a mature WNBA player who, who knows exactly what she's doing out there. And again, I do think she can even get better. Um, but it's been fun to watch. It's been fun to watch her grow these last couple of years. Take a couple questions from the Zoom. Um, M. Adler, go ahead, M. Yeah, first one for uh, uh, just for Zoom. You know, obviously your best day from three of the season so far. I'm just wondering what you were feeling um, on the court compared to the first few games of the season for you. What? Your best game from three-point range? Oh, I mean, was it? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like I missed a lot of shots that I should have made tonight. So um, that's a little disappointing. It is nice to see the ball go through the net, though, because um, obviously, for me personally, I haven't really started the season off shooting well. Um, so, yeah, just going to keep trying to keep building on that. You know, you can't get uh, high with the high and, lows with, and low with the lows. Isn't that what they say? So I'm just trying to keep it even keel. Gotcha. Um, and then just for as any, you know, um, we played Chicago. We played Chicago before. Obviously, they have a great front court. You held them in check for most of the game. I'm just wondering what kind of different problems uh, Connecticut presents as a more back to the basket team down there. Um, I mean, they're just tough players. I think obviously, you know, playing against Jonko, um, Bree, just their post players. They're, you know, a tough matchup. Um, I think. We just have to kind of do better and just get, you know, early position on them and, you know, not that let them seal as much. I think Sue kind of touched on it, just playing a zone. I think we just let them seal um, quite easily in the second quarter. Um, so just kind of adjusting to that. Time for more in the room. 
So what do you say to your teammates um, after the, after a loss like this? Um, <clears throat> just that, just that these games like you're gonna have good moments and bad moments, and I think right now some of the lulls we're experiencing are we're letting these bad moments build, and we're we're kind of letting them um, take away from our aggressiveness. And just that you know you want to go out there and play in an aggressive way because that covers up mistakes at times. But I think we're kind of you know at times taking an opposite approach. Um, so just 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 trying to stay the course of, of it all. Like I'm not. It's not lip service when I say like I don't feel. Um, I just I just don't feel. I mean I keep coming back to the word panic, but it's like I just don't feel that. You know I feel like we have enough in the locker room and we just got to start piecing it together. Okay. All right. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate it. Thank you, well, Coach. Uh, <coughs> Come in here in just a moment. Coach, why don't you just open us up uh, with just your thoughts on today's game? Yeah, it's a tough loss. Um, you know, I thought their the offensive um, execution that kind of lacked last game, we improved, scored 86. But then um, defensively, kind of not as locked in until um, uh, hopefully we could put a, a game together. Um, offensively and defensively, but overall, um, it was good to have Ezzy and Sue back in the fold. Um, some good contributions from everyone. Um, Connecticut is a very good team, and um, just understanding the energy that level that we have to play at and um, the aggressiveness and intensity level that we have to play at, I thought that we showed it today in spurts, but we just have to be consistent. Okay, we've got about 10 minutes. Let's open it up. Questions here in the room? Yeah, just. Um, uh, the things that happened in that fourth quarter was uh, when you, you guys are scored 32 to, to like 19, went into that quarter with a six point lead and it just felt like the separation began and you couldn't quite get it back. A lot of free throws for them. Uh oh. Coach, there's been a couple of games um, that in the last couple of minutes, there's been a very uncharacteristic turnover. So do you kind of attribute that to not having full rosters during these games? Or um, what kind of has been the strategy for that the last minute or so? Yeah, uh, I think that couple of things that come into play, like obviously this was our first game with our entire roster. Um, and having enough practice time, I don't think this group hasn't practiced together not one time really, honestly. And just going through our end of game execution, our flow and playing that's like normal in a practice um, cadence, whether it's the time that we've been at home, that we've been able to practice a lot. And um, I think just getting rhythm with one another and um, just kind of being a little bit more focused in those possessions. With a full roster tonight, what did you like about different lineups that you were able to try out? I liked Ezzy's activity. I liked um, that we got a lot of stuff to the rim. I think uh, for the past couple of games, we haven't been able to get um, efficient paint points, um, paint touches in general. Um, I love Sue's ability to hit some threes for us. Um, that you know our, we're in our normal roles, um, so our bench players can reserves can come in and and impact the game where they're used to impacting the game. Um, I thought our en energy level was great. Um, and just our overall just aura was great. Is familiarity going to build the consistency that you need? I think so. Um, you know, we've started Ezzy this entire year. And I know she's used to coming off the bench, but she's been a, a bright spot in that unit. And so just getting that, that, that familiarity back with, you know, being out um, for a couple of games um, is going to happen, but it can't happen in practice. Honestly, it has to happen in games, which is tougher um, than we're used to. Um, but that's kind of the only time we'll have um, to get it done. Do you think that you'll eventually move her back to the bench with, with the way she's playing? Well, I'm not sure. You know, it's interesting to um, she showed that she's just very capable in that position. Um, and obviously we're working Sadie's, rounding Sadie's back into shape. And, um, you know, what Ezzy can do with whatever unit she's on the floor with, I don't want to hold that back. And I think she's done a great job this year. Do you think that the, the physicality between these two teams um, sort of reared its head or 
where there's something going on there. Yeah, I think that's the MO. I think, honestly, to be physical with us, to deny, take us off of our spots. We like to play free flowing, and we're a very rhythm team. And with the little bit of physicality, um, I think there needs to just be some consistency um, with how the game is officiated. When Connecticut's going on a big lineup of Brianna Jones, John Cole Jones, AT, Dewana Bonner, was there any consideration to to have Stewie as the and Mercedes or John Tell in there to kind of? Yeah, no, because then our offense kind of takes a dip. Um, and honestly, I thought we did a, a decent job on AT on the eight points. Um, and she obviously had 12 assists, almost had a triple double. Yes, yeah, statistically, we look at it and see that, but I thought we kept her in front. Um, I thought. Where, where they executed the big lineup was just defensively. They're able to clog it up, rotate a little bit, and switch, go trap jewel, and be big in that way. But I, I thought we matched up decent, de decently to where, you know, really Rihanna Jones was playing against our post player, and we, you know, that's a tough matchup. We struggled guarding her in the paint. And oh, yeah, um, the in the fourth quarter they hit five threes, five of their six that they made in the game. Um, I believe Sue mentioned that you guys were playing a lot of zone in the fourth, and then I guess what did you see from that as far as how they were able to get open? It was actually just one pass shot. I remember DB had, had one on the uh, other sideline. Um, this is a team that doesn't take a lot of threes, um, but they are efficient in the ones that they take. And so if you think about statistically how to to, to play zone and how teams have played them, teams have played zone on them, and it's just very interesting how teams catch fire against us. But um, I think zone allowed us to stay um, just a little bit more tight off defensively, um, and just a great shooter made some good shots in that stretch. Can you talk about the toughness it takes for Drew Lloyd to take those two charters in the second half? I'm uh, just selfless, I think, and it's, um, you know, to, to sacrifice your body back to back in those key moments. And it's growth, too, to know that we've seen that on film and, and um, her ability to, uh, yeah, be tough in that moment. It's not easy for those players coming down here and, and, and being able to, to position yourself um, and take a charge for the team. But um, I thought that those were key plays for us and just plays Jewel makes plays like that were better. Hey, just being at five and five and to have your full roster for the first time a month into the season, just where are you guys at as a team? Oh, we're getting better. I think we have, <laughs> we're getting better does not sound great, right? Because we just lost, but I think um, just understanding one another, um, this. You guys know how important it is to have practice, to have training camp with your group, and this group hadn't had one together. Um, but I think we are learning. And the thing that I always think about when going through the adversity is um, I think Chicago was a blueprint. They won a championship in 15 and 15. So I'm not trying to look at the record and <clears throat> um, panic by any means, but it's just encouraging to know that we don't want to be bad. We don't want to be great in June. Uh, we want to be great in July, August, September, and peak at the correct time. Let me get a couple questions from uh, Zoom. Uh, M. Adler, go ahead, M. Hey, Coach. Uh, first thing I just wanted to ask about, there was a run in, uh, I think it was the of the fourth quarter, where Connecticut went back to its starters, we kept in an all bench front up. I just wanted to run into the process there and what fed into those sub patterns. Yeah, I thought that also in the third quarter, I played um, our starters for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I trust our bench to perform. Um, in Connecticut, you, they play their starters the entire game uh, for an entire season. So to, to go tip for tap with them, just knowing that that's not our normal rotation, um, that's what that was. And then just, Connecticut presented so many problems with you guys down low, just in terms of how good Bree Jones and JJ are at ceiling. There. I'm just wondering, with the personality you've had, especially when you're starting lineup, what do you see as a way to move forward with, with, with that group while keeping 
Seems like how to get from being able to seal so close to the basket. Yeah, it's a couple of things. Doing our work early as opposed to just meeting her early. And I know it's easier said than done, but also post defense starts on the perimeter. Pressuring the ball, not letting the entry passes be easy, um, and then just bringing bodies to her. Even a couple of times in the first half, we were supposed to come and come quick on Jones, and we, we didn't. So just kind of being connected with our schemes. Um, but yeah, it's it's tough. I think you know having another post back in Ezzy can kind of eliminate a, a lot of other teams' big post players, but. Um, yeah, it's just the effort and, and, and being active and denying and making it a little bit tougher for a post to get so deep. Time for a couple more questions here. Hunter. Coach, the other day you kind of mentioned or jokingly said that you'd never gotten a technical as a coach. Uh, tonight the free throw disparity was 30 to 13. You were over there talking with the refs. Uh, how hard were you trying tonight? <laughs> 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 so please give me one. <laughs> Better luck next time. Thank you. <laughs> Um, just talk about the, the growth and development you've seen from Ezzy. Um, obviously, you know, led your team in scoring tonight and uh, obviously coming off of being sick as well. Yeah, I had a, you know, I wanted to keep an eye out on her and making sure because she was coming off from health and safety protocol that I um, didn't want to tax her so much early. And so I know she kind of went on a tear in that first half. I took her out just because I saw a little bit of fatigue coming and I didn't want that to affect her at the end of the game. Um, and then when I saw the first half, she was good. I kind of just let her loose. But I think um, as is a testament to when, you're ha when you um, draft a young player and have the ability to, to um, just learn and grow with them in the organization and, and train and develop and get better. And she's, you know, does a lot of hard work on her own and the way she's played back home in Australia, the way she's played for the national team, it's like no, um, you know, not a surprise that she's just blossoming. And I think she, there's, she's, she's still, the biggest difference I think this year is just the confidence level in knowing our systems. And it's not, so it's not by, by, by chance that she's um, just being so effective defensively because she now knows where she needs to be. She knows where everybody else needs to be. And offensively, if you watch her, she's like telling other people what to do, where to go. So the knowledge of like how to play is, it's, it's coming as well as um, her ability on the floor. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you.